Overclockers, my name is Bryony and in this Overclockers Academy tutorial I'm going to show you how to put together a high quality PC streaming setup in 2022. You might already have a following and you want to up your game or maybe it's something you've been meaning to try for a while but just don't know where to get started. I'm going to cover the hardware side of things and then show you the best way to configure your broadcasting software so that you can go live. So let's get into it. Kicking off the video with the hardware setup, and this includes your PC or laptop, any peripherals, lighting, and even a green screen. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using a full setup from Streamplify. You can watch our dedicated video if you want some more info. You don't need all of this wonderful kit to get started with streaming, but I'm gonna show you how to set it up and use it, and it might come in handy if you wanna upgrade in the future. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail when it comes to the actual PC or laptop hardware that you're going to need for streaming, otherwise I would be here all day. But let me know in the comments below if you would like a dedicated video that helps you choose or even build a streaming PC. Instead, I shall direct you to our very helpful blog post which you can read through in your own time and has all the information you need when it comes to choosing your streaming PC. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using an Asus Tough laptop. First up, you want to go ahead and plug in your new peripherals and get everything positioned on your desk and ready for that marathon streaming session. Most peripherals are plug and play these days, like the ones that I'm using here from Streamplify. However, some manufacturers will have software that you can install to adjust the audio or the RGB lighting, etc. So make sure to get that downloaded. Get your headset in, the microphone in position and unmuted, the webcam on, Stream Deck plugged in if you have one too, and of course, a mouse and keyboard and monitor if you're using a desktop PC. The best place for your webcam is at head height. This can be on top of your monitor or even off to the side as well. Remember that it's gonna be your connection to your viewers, so ensure that it's not too far away and that your torso fills up the majority of the frame. Next, if you're using a cardioid microphone like I am here, you wanna try and position it around a hand's width away from your mouth. You don't wanna be munching on it unless you're doing ASMR, and you don't wanna be screaming into it from a distance either. Next up is if you are using a green screen, now is the perfect time to set it up. It can be a great tool for hiding a less desirable backdrop and making your stream look more professional. To get the best effect and ensure that you can be clearly separated from the backdrop, make sure that the fabric is nice and tight with no creases. We're using the Streamplify green screen which does all that for you and it's super easy to set up. You want to push it as far back as you can while still giving yourself enough space to move around in the frame. This prevents the green colour from spilling onto your shoulders and your skin and giving you a bit of a Hulk look. Finally, it's lighting. You wanna ensure that you are evenly lit on either side and from the front. This is the most flattering. You're gonna to wanna to turn off any ceiling lights as they can be a bit of a weird color and also cast some odd shadows across your face. You don't necessarily need fancy ring lights like we're using here. Just a simple desk lamp can really help. But it's best to rely on more than just your monitor to light up your face. Good lighting will make any webcam look so much better. Just work with what you have and ensure that it looks natural without overexposing the camera. Because we have the option, as we're using the stream profile lighting, I'm gonna adjust the brightness so that it's not too blinding and also set the warmth to somewhere in the middle. This is gonna depend on your skin tone or the look that you're going for. And of course, it is something that you can tweak by looking at your webcam while you're moving it about and adjusting the settings. Additionally, if you're using a green screen, make sure that your lighting setup isn't causing any weird shadows and that it has enough light shining on it to show up a nice bright green. The second chapter of the video is all about configuring the software side of things. Your broadcasting software enables you to stream your content to your audience by transmitting the footage from your display, gameplay and camera to your desired platform. 
There's quite a few different ones available, such as OBS, XSplit, and Streamlabs. For this tutorial, I'm going to use OBS, as it's free to use, nice and easy to set up, and it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. First of all, download and install OBS and open it up. The quickest and easiest way to get started is with the auto configuration wizard. You simply follow the steps on screen and it's gonna automatically test your system and attempt to find the correct settings that your PC can handle. This includes streaming or recording, resolution, bitrate, and encoder. There's also the option to input your streaming platform by simply logging into your account, which makes things super duper easy. You can also add your stream key, which can normally be found in your account details on the platform you're streaming to. If you've not yet made an account for your chosen platform, open your browser and do that now. You can choose from sites like Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. For this Academy video, I'm going to go ahead and use Twitch. Once the testing is complete, you can see what OBS has deemed most suitable for your internet and PC. If you go ahead and take a closer look at these settings, you can see OBS has recommended a video bitrate of 6,000 kilobytes per second, which is what Twitch themselves recommend as the best bitrate for high quality 1080p streaming. Moving on from this, you can see the configuration wizard recommending hardware NVENC encoding. Don't panic if yours doesn't say this, as NVENC is the encoder used by NVIDIA graphics cards. This option will say VCE for AMD or QuickSync for Intel. The final thing to take a look at is the FPS. When streaming your gameplay to the world, there's nothing better than the glorious smoothness of 60 FPS, compared to the stuttery 30 FPS that OBS also supports. Currently, 60 FPS is the highest frame rate OBS can stream. Maybe one day we'll receive that sweet 144 FPS streaming life. These settings will vary depending on which platform you're streaming to, like YouTube Live, for example, can actually stream at 4K and 60 FPS if you've got the internet to handle it. For what we're doing here, all of these settings are looking good to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply and keep it. Remember that you can always go into the output settings menu later on if you wanna change it manually or if you have any issues. First up, I'm gonna show you how to set up your audio. By default, OBS Studio is set to capture your desktop audio and microphone. You can verify this by looking at the volume meters in the audio mixer section of the main OBS window. However, if you want to set it up manually, click on settings, audio, and select the device you want to use. You can then check the volume levels and adjust the gain until the peak of your voice is hitting around the minus 10 decibel mark, which is near the top of the yellow on OBS. Also, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and check that I've got any audio devices that I don't want to use. So you can see there's desktop audio, which is where the game sounds are gonna come from. There's audio input capture, which is actually the webcam microphone. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute that now. And then finally, there's the Streamify microphone. Just to double check, it's the correct microphone. You can click on settings click on properties, and then you can see the device that's being used up here. If you click the drop down, you can change for the particular one that you want to use. Next up, it's time to add the content that you're going to be streaming. At the bottom of the window is a box called sources. You can click on the little plus symbol or right click and select add. Select display capture if you wanna capture absolutely everything visible on your monitor. Select game capture to record your gameplay. You can select window capture if you're using a non-game application or select video capture device for a webcam or a capture card. You can then go ahead and give it a name, select okay. A box shall appear and you'll see your webcam. So you can see I've selected the Streamify webcam. I'm then gonna change the uh, resolution. I'm using a 1080p webcam, so I just wanna make sure that that's set up correctly. There we go. Go ahead and click OK. And you can see that that webcam has now appeared in the preview window. If you drag on the corner, you can then scale that to the size you want. For gaming, I'd go ahead and make the webcam quite small and move it right into the corner. And don't forget, now is also a great time to adjust your lighting and make sure that your camera source is looking as good as it can be. 
Additionally, ABS even has the option to add your own customized stream overlay, which can really personalize your stream and help develop your brand. You can actually create your own if you're handy on Photoshop or simply use one of the many online services. These can also be added as a source and I'd advise actually making and adding them as a different scene. This can help to add variety to your content and make it look more professional to fill time when your stream is paused, you're in between games or even while you're just talking straight to camera. Now that you've added your gameplay, webcam and any scenes, it's time to blend it all together by putting that green screen to work. I'm going to click on video capture device and then click on filters and you'll see this window appear. Down the bottom there's effect filters and if you click on this little plus symbol you can then choose chroma key. When adding a chroma key OBS is going to sort of guess the settings for you. In most cases you're probably going to need to fine tune it using these different sliders. So I'm going to move this one here until it takes out most of the green and then the smoothness one can kind of even out that little bit more to just get it exactly how you want it. You want to play around here until you get the look that you want. If you find that you're having issues here, you might not actually have enough light hitting your screen and it's creating some nasty shadows. Play around with the lighting and make sure that you're not wearing green either as you're just gonna blend straight into the background. Once you've done that, you can then add a second filter, which is the crop filter. So I'm gonna use this to take out these extra sides here and just make it so that my webcam is the part that I wanna show my viewers. So I'm gonna go for a left crop of about 280. There you go, you can see that it's taken out this side here and a right crop, we'll go for 280 once again. So if you close that down now, you can see that my webcam is down the bottom here. I'm just going to maneuver that over and that's it. We've done the green screen. Finally, you want to double check the order of your sources. As you can see, I've added everyone's favorite website to demonstrate this. And it's a very important step as you don't want to have your webcam source below your gameplay source. Otherwise, no one's going to be able to see your webcam. If they're in the wrong place, simply drag them into the correct position. With the green screen set up, you can put your webcam over the top of your gameplay. It's all gonna blend together and you're gonna look like you're part of your favorite game. That's it, you successfully set up your stream and you're ready to begin sharing what you love with the world. Simply click on start streaming when you're ready and you're gonna go live. Other things to consider include popular add-ons such as sound alerts to let your community interact with you on stream and cheer you on in game. Or the popular Moobot plugin, a bot which helps you deal with the more arduous tasks of streaming, such as sharing your social media profiles or removing those pesky haters from the depths of your chat. This means that you can focus on more important things, such as building your community and entertaining your viewers and hitting that headshot in game. Don't neglect your chat either and follow along with a dedicated second monitor. This allows you to always have an eye on your followers and makes it easier to engage and interact with your audience without having to alt tab back and forth between Twitch and your game. Finally, if you really want the ultimate streaming setup, consider a second streaming system. This ensures maximum FPS as it allows your PC to focus on running the game and your streaming PC can simply focus on compositing your streams and running your streaming software. Thanks for watching this Overclockers Academy video on how to get started with streaming. I've only really scratched the surface with this video, but hopefully it helps you to begin your streaming journey. If you like the look of any of this wonderful hardware used in the video, make sure to check the description below for a link to the Streamify brand on the Overclockers website. Remember to like, hit subscribe, press the bell icon so you don't miss the upcoming videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Good luck with your stream.